Gary, you talk to us a lot about the interfaithism and how important that is to the picture that we're painting. And what we haven't quite gotten to yet is the fact that Pope Francis is a globalist in every sense of the word. He's the first Jesuit. He's into this global so-called climate change fiction. He is, the media is painting him favorable in every picture. He's pro-EU, and that's important. He would be anti-Brexit. He would be anti any of the countries pulling away from the European Union. You, Gary, said to me that you see him or someone like him in place anyway when this this one world government comes into play. Why don't you take it from there? Well, yeah, if you look closely at this pope, he's moved very quickly since taking his position in March of 2013. He's facilitated globalization really in every possible way. He has intentionally promoted socialistic ideas while taking shots at capitalism and free enterprise at different points along the way. As you mentioned, he's a strong advocate for European unity as well as uh, the idea of a global order, global government type of concept. We talked about his interfaith positions Uh, before the break. Uh, He's meeting regularly with top religious leaders from other religions. And so this whole thing is coming together. And again, whether it's this pope or another pope, what I do want to say is this current pope, Francis, embodies everything that I would have expected years ago, all the positions that a pope would need to hold in order to help facilitate uh, the Roman Catholic Church being brought into the New World Order. And, And that's important because I have long believed that you cannot have a true system of global government without the Vatican at the very least endorsing that agenda. Because if the world's Catholics aren't, are not on board, how can you have a world government? And you've got over one billion Catholics in the world, and so what their Pope says is extremely important. Now, not all Catholics will fall in line, but many probably will. And uh, Francis is being portrayed so favorably by the media. He's extremely popular all over the world. Latin America swoons over him. The European politicians swoon over this Pope. It's as if he can do no wrong. And part of the reason for the way he's being presented is he is a globalist through and through. He's part of this agenda. So yes, I could see him being in place when some type of international crisis occurs and suddenly in the aftermath we have a rapid rush toward world government. But if not him, it could be another pope similar to him. It's just that this particular pope has been more outspoken than what we saw when Benedict was in power. And he is really doing everything in his power to come together with Islamic leaders. He's had meetings in in Rome. He's had meetings in the Middle East. He's not saying anything at all negative about Islam or, well, he's kind of like Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. It's hard for him to say the words radical Islam. And why is that? Well, it's because he's been negotiating and has been involved behind the scenes in helping to support the Arab Peace Initiative that was first presented by the Saudi leader back in Beirut in 2002, I believe. So this has been floating around behind the scenes for about 14 years now, and it calls for a two-state solution with Israel going back to its pre 1967 borders, and Jerusalem, East Jerusalem, would become the capital of a Palestinian state. It cites various UN resolutions. This is strongly being promoted by the UN and other internationalist institutions, and they're very serious about this, and the Pope is fully on board. So at some point, you're going to see some type of event in the Middle East where all of this comes together. The question is, will there first be a major conflict, or Mm -hmm. will this happen before? I I don't know, but right now it looks like we're headed towards some type of crisis mode. As you mentioned, Jan, earlier, uh, you brought up off the air that, you know, Pope Francis is, uh, he's getting up there in years, and that is true. You know, he may only have a few years left as Pope, who knows? And so if he is to be the Pope when all of this goes down, if he's the, the man of the hour who will throw his hat in the ring, so to speak, and endorse global government, it would have to happen fairly soon, historically speaking. The Time magazine cover from, uh, oh, I guess a year and a half ago, the New World Pope kind of says it all. They're heralding him in this direction, in this way. And yet we still have evangelicals or people who claim to be Bible 
Bible believers anyway, who are uh, running around saying, oh, we're compatible with them. Well, you know, we could talk theology all day, and we've done that before. But uh, on this issue, on the idea of globalism, there's no doubt about it that this is the most forward-thinking pope that we've seen. Pope John Paul II was was certainly for globalism, but this pope really does take the cake. Gary Ka, you said something to me. Most globalists, I mean, they're not if I can be blunt, they're not satanically involved in anything. They're well-intentioned. And you even named some who are well-intentioned. The Bush family are well-intentioned. And I think that's important that we bring that out. These are not necessarily conspiratorial people. I would just say this. You know, Satan has a lot of tools in his arsenal, and there are stages of deception. And for those people that might not be in favor of an all-out world government with Europe being in control or the Antichrist, you know, one way that they can be brought into the mix and promote it, thinking that they're doing something good, is if they believe, well, it's going to happen anyway, there's going to be a global government, so why not the U.S. be in charge? Why not the U.S. Mm -hmm. be in a position where it can call at least some of the shots? And therefore, they argue that we have to go along with all of this to be in any kind of position to uh, have an influence on global leadership in the days ahead. And that's a huge deception. The answer is not to become involved at all to begin with and, and to pull back from it, even though it would be painful now because of how deeply we're already into yeah. it as a nation. And uh, just like Britain will experience some of that in the days ahead. But yeah, a lot of these people have rationalized their actions. They think in their secular mind that this is the way to go, but they're not looking at it through spiritual eyes. And that's why if Trump gets elected, we need to pray for him because he's largely been a secular person. We need to pray that God enlightens him and has solid Christians around him so that he gets 